Good after, every, afternoon, everyone. Like Dr. Sweet just said, my name is Lieutenant Andrew DeGarmo, and with me I have my research team, Captain Ben Barr and Lieutenant Commander Sherry Flippin. Uh, we are graduate students at San Diego State University, and we are also active duty military public affairs officers. As such, we're very well aware that the veteran population in the United States is declining. It currently sits about 7%, and experts predict that by 2045, we'll see nearly another 40% reduction. So people won't necessarily have the experience to think back about the time that they served on a ship or flew planes in the military, for instance. So when a crisis happens in the Marine Corps or the Navy, you know, people won't have that experience to think back on, and therefore they must rely on news media for context. As academics and professionals and practitioners, we're always looking for new and creative ways to engage our target publics to, really, to elicit a desired response. So how could we put somebody in the seat of a fighter jet uh, from across the world and get them to experience that 360 video? So I'm sure most of you may have been scrolling along on Facebook, on your phone, and noticed a video actually responded to your phone's movements. You might have taken it, explored it, looked all around, and seen all the different perspectives the video provides. That's 360 video. 360 video is a novel storytelling tactic that gives a perspective, a 360 degree perspective. The, in November 2016, the New York Times actually launched an initiative called the Daily 360, where they set out to release a new 360 degree video every day for a whole year. Even the United Nations has launched a virtual reality and immersive video uh, initiative to help put people in the shoes of situations happening all over the world. And this, what their intention behind this is to build empathy. So as these international organizations are starting to look at 360 video and as the technology of 360 video uh, gets better, higher resolution, and as the technology gets cheaper for everybody, we wanted to bring immersive video technology research and public relations research together for the very first time. Applying science to explore 360 degree videos and their effects, we designed a longitudinal between subject experiment. In order to bridge the gap that Andrew just mentioned, we looked into research on immersive video within other disciplines such as marketing and journalism. Once we started focusing that research back into PR, we relied heavily on Ferguson's 1984 work, Building a Theory in Public Relations, as well as Hodden Grunig's 1999 work, Guidelines for Measuring Public Relations. So to conceptualize OPR, we use visual framing to provide participants with a unique perspective, supporting the spatial presence theory, or the presence of being there as described by Worth et al. We then took a look at Coombs Crisis Communication Theory to implement measures of the impact of presence on the organization's reputation. Using the Navy Blue Angels performance video, we sought to operationalize our research. In order to maintain consistency in a controlled environment, we used the Virtual Learning Lab at SDSU, and participants are once, upon arrival were randomly selected in, into three different groups. The first group was, um, they watched the 360 video using a head mounted display. So for this group, the participants sat in a swivel chair and they were able to rotate completely around to 360 degrees. The second group got to watch the 360 degree video on a traditional laptop. And then the third group was our, contr our control group. So prior to watching the video at all, we had our participants fill out some familiarity questions. So, uh, were they familiar with the Navy? Were they familiar with the Blue Angels? And then what their familiarity was with 360 degree video. Uh, upon completion of watching the video, the participants were asked to take a simulator sickness questionnaire as well as a presence questionnaire to see how immersed they actually felt within the environment. For phase two, uh, we sent out an actual crisis article 24 to 48 hours later to our participants. And the crisis we introduced to them was the crisis mm -hmm. where the Blue Angels actually touched wings midair during a practice flight. So after, after they read the article, they then um, were asked to complete the, the Coombs and Holiday Reputation Scale, as well as the OPR Trust Scale. So as we analyzed our data, an independent sample t-test found a statistically significant higher reputation index score for individuals that had attended a Navy Blue Angels flight demonstration in person in comparison to those that hadn't. Now this was a difference of 10%. So this provides a real world foundation for our research indicating that physical presence can have an impact on the organization's reputation. Now, realistically, we know that not everyone can attend one of these flight demonstrations, and that's where our research comes in. 
so while the individuals who attended the flight demonstrations were self-selecting, an additional independent sample t-test found that uh, a statistically significant, again, higher reputation index score from individuals who have viewed the 360 degree immersive video in comparison to those that do the 2D video. Again, this was an increase of 11%. So we can see even in our non-probability sample that perceived presence had a similar impact on the organization's reputation as physical presence in attending the event. Now a bivariate measure also found a moderate statistically significant positive correlation between the perception of presence and trust in the organization. Of course, it's important to build a foundation of trust as the organization builds that re positive relational history with its public so that, that through that's the lens through which individuals will later view uh, crises in the future. But is it all worth it? Uh, should we as public relations professionals and academics uh, spend the time and the effort and the money to research this technology as we explore different tactics to reach our public? Well, so far, our research says yes. So going back to Ben's question of how do we see this and how do we see this in real life as a practitioner? What sort of situations where would we actually use this? Blue Angels is one example. When I checked into Commander Naval Surface Force Pacific in July of 17, this was uh, a couple weeks after the USS Fitzgerald collision and a couple weeks before the USS John S. McCain collision. So when I was there, we were developing information subsidies to, for the American public and reporters alike to show them what a bridge looked like on a ship, you know, in different situations for straits transits, you know, at night. Um, and it was really challenging for them to understand and grasp that concept. Now, if we would have had, for instance, an, uh, a 10, 15 minute video where they could just sit there and look around a bridge, see what it's like. You could actually look outside and see the ships a straight transit, you know, and it could be from, you know, a straight transit a year or two before. It's a similar situation. But this would have given perspective to those reporters. We went to IPRC a couple weeks ago, and that was actually one of the most common questions we got, is how could we use this with reporters? You know, to provide them the background and context within the military, we're full of situations that reporters and the civilians alike would never experience. So if we can create those experiences for someone, uh, especially reporters, then when they report that, you know, hey, it, it may come out more accurate and they'll actually gain a little bit more perspective. And that's just one situation within the United States Navy that, that where I see that working. Yeah, in the Marine Corps, we actually had a video go viral a few years ago that was a, a Taliban attack on what was then our northernmost patrol base in Afghanistan. And this video, video was recorded by a combat videographer that was in the midst of the firefight and could provide that first person perspective and the video gained uh, well over 2 million views. Now, had this been a 360 degree video, the viewer would have been able to engage in an even a more immersive experience to see the chaos unfolding all the way around them and to see Marines interacting, communicating and making life and death situations, uh, decisions right there in the moment. And uh, thus building just a deeper understanding of Marines go through in that situation and again, building that positive relational history for the future relationship. So bringing this back to our study, we recognized we had an opportunity to measure these, these effects. The Blue Angels video on Facebook received more than a million views. And the USA Today video on YouTube of the Blue Angels performance has received now over 10 million views. So this does represent that engagement that we're, we're always striving for but what else can we do with that? How do we seek additional ways to use these videos to gain a, a better perspective of what we do? So with that, we appreciate your presence here today and we welcome any questions.